What's going on guys? This is the Red Rogue. I hope you're all doing well today and welcome to another episode of Awesome Add-ons. The series where I go over one of the myriad of add-ons in World of Warcraft created by very awesome developers to help make our WoW lives a little bit easier. This add-on is one of the very first ones I used and it's also something that solves a really annoying issue I had with the standard Blizzard UI. The inability to move your action bars or scale them. So today, we'll be looking at Bartender. Thank you so much for joining me, and let's begin. I'll leave a Curse Forge download link to Bartender in a pinned comment below so you can download it and try it for yourself, or you can use whatever download manager you prefer to instead of Curse Forge, whatever works for you. Basically, Bartender is an action bar UI replacement and is extremely simple to use. And the best part is, once you have it set up to your liking, you can replicate every single one of your settings instantly on any of your other characters. I'll be using a completely fresh UI with just Bartender to give you a better idea visually of what to expect when you first try it out. And I already tremendously miss my UI compared to the stock Blizzard one. Anyways, once you've installed Bartender, you'll be able to open the user interface by typing forward slash BT. Once you're in the Bartender UI, you'll see a bunch of clickable named subsections for things like Bar 1, Bar 2, Bar 3, etc. At the top of the UI, you'll see the options Lock, Button Lock, Minimap Icon, and Key Bindings. So we'll start with explaining each of these real quick. Unticking the lock box will highlight all of the interactable components of the UI of Bartender in green, allowing you to move their position freely. You'll notice a second pop-up window which gives an option for bar snapping, which basically means that any bars you move will try to lock into an appropriate position next to another bar if you move them close together enough. You'll then click on the lock button to disable this movement feature. Button lock works just like the one on the standard Blizzard UI, and makes it so you can't accidentally click and drag a button off of its position unless you hold a specific key down while trying to do so. Changing that is part of the standard UI interface setting, but I believe Shift is the standard option. You'll also have the minimap icon button you can enable and disable, which is another way you can access the interface for Bartender or the lock and unlock bar feature as well. Lastly for the top row is the key bindings option, which is a quick and convenient way of setting your key binds to each specific action button. Simply click the key bindings button and then hover your mouse cursor over the action button that you want to set a key bind to. Press the key or combination of keys you want to use, and voila, easy as that. You can also clear your choice by pressing escape. Under the bars tab of Bartender itself in the UI, you'll be able to set predetermined modifier keys for things like casting abilities on yourself or your focus. This can be somewhat handy if you don't use any macros or other combat interface supplements as it's a pretty straightforward way of handling it, though I personally don't use them. You do have access to an out of range and out of mana indication system that you can customize though. This allows you to make your hotkeys change a specific color if you aren't close enough to use your move, or if you're out of mana to use that move. You can set it to either make the entire button change colors, or you can have it just change the color of the hotkey text. This can be quite handy for those getting used to their abilities, however I personally find the hotkey text to be sufficient as making the whole button change colors is a bit distracting at times. Though if you want to do this, you can change the colors of this very easily. Now let's get into the really juicy stuff with Bartender, moving and changing the size and shapes of bars, as well as hiding all that Blizzard UI clutter. We'll use bar 1 as an example, as numbers 1 through 10 are going to function exactly the same. In the general settings tab, we'll be able to change all the really important things, like setting if the bar even appears or not with the enabled checkbox. You'll also be able to adjust things like the alpha level, which is the transparency of the bar and its icons, as well as the scale of the buttons. The padding option is what sets exactly how many pixels there are in between each of the buttons on your bars, and the buttons option obviously allows you to choose how many buttons you want on this bar, between 1 and 12 total. You can also change how many rows your bar will have, so if you want to have a small 4x3 square of buttons, then this is where you'll change that option. Your horizontal growth, vertical growth, and flyout direction simply change how the buttons expand based on the number of buttons and rows you have. So feel free to experiment with this if you want. I personally don't see need to adjust these, but that is entirely up to your decision with whatever UI you're trying to make. You'll also be able to do extra goodies like hiding the text of your macros if any of your hotkeys have a macro, or hiding the hotkey letters on the buttons as well. 
In the Visibility tab, you can set your hotkeys to fade out or be hidden based on a variety of conditions. So for instance, if you want a really minimalistic look, you can set your bars to disappear when you're out of combat, or for various other conditions as well. The tooltips for each of these options explain the conditions very well, so I don't want to gnaw your ear off with explaining everything over and over. You can also write custom conditions for when bars will show and hide, which seems to work off the macro conditional system much like how you would write regular macros. So for example, if you wanted to hide your bar or have it only show up when it had an active target, you can write a macro like at target exists, show, hide, or something along those lines. I'm not super well versed in macros just yet, so that's just a little example of something you can make with Bartender if you wanted. For the next tab, we have the State Configuration. This allows a player to implement mouse over style macro effects within Bartender without having to individually write a bunch of macros. This and the auto assist casting features can again be very handy as an all in one solution for your action buttons and keybinds. However, I personally don't need that many mouse over effects as a rogue so I instead just made a few macros for the things I do need them for. This tab also has ways you can set up bar paging, which is when your action bar changes based on key presses or stance changes. For instance, a perfect example is the rogue stealth bar. When you enter stealth, your UI automatically replaces your main action bar with the stealth bar, and this add-on lets you change which bar you want it to switch to. It also allows you to set keybinds for control, alt, and shift to change the bars that you want to pop up as well. So for example, I can make it that whenever I hold the control key, it'll switch to bar 2, and when I hold alt, it'll switch to bar 3. This is another feature that is very handy for an all-in-one usage, but I like seeing all of my bars simultaneously, so this is not one that I've seen a whole lot of use of personally. But if you want a really minimalistic look for your UI, then this could be very handy. Lastly is the positioning tab. This allows you to fine tune the exact spot down to the pixel where you want your bars to sit on screen. The fine tuned adjustments can be very handy for the OCD UI folks like myself, so this is a nice feature to have since otherwise you're moving these around by hand. For the remaining UI elements that we can adjust with Bartender, such as the bag bar, extra action bar, micro menu, etc., these are mostly just UI visual elements or artwork enabling and disabling choices. The most useful and important thing though that you should remember with Bartender, once you've spent all this time fiddling with all these options and scalings and transparencies and settings and it can all take a very long time your first time if you want to get it just the right way, you don't want to have to do this all over again for every character, and you don't have to. If you click on the Profiles tab at the bottom, you'll see you can reset a profile, create a new one, or use an existing one. So for example, I've been fiddling around on this test profile just to show you all how it works in this video. If I want my original setup back though, I can either select from this existing profiles drop down menu and just select Sarah's profile and it will come back instantly. Or if I want to copy over the settings from Sarah's profile, but still have it as its own separate entity so any changes I make to it will not affect Sarah's profile, I can just copy over the settings from it. I personally just use the same profile across all of my characters, because I like having everything consistent with the keybinds and layout, and that way if I update it on anyone, it will be the same for everyone. You can also delete profiles too if you have a bajillion like I do, which I probably will eventually, but today is not that day. Bartender is actually a pretty complex add-on and can take care of a lot of little things in the game all at once without having to use macros or extra add-ons to help with keybinds and bar paging and all that stuff. So if you're looking for an all-in-one solution, then this is a great choice. Even if not and you're just using it for moving bars or scaling them or opacities and all that, this is still a fantastic and easy to use choice. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Awesome Add-On, folks. If so, then feel free to check out the rest of my awesome add-on series that I have on the channel, as well as the tons of other types of videos that I do here too. If you did enjoy the video, then please consider leaving a comment, a like, or sharing it with other folks, as it's all greatly appreciated and helps a lot with the channel's growth. Anyways, I just wanted to extend my gratitude to you, my viewers, commenters, subscribers, and especially my patrons, who all help make these Sheba shenanigans possible. Thank you all so much for watching. This is the Red Rogue, and I'll see you guys around.